Deville. It is me, Janet Cormier, back in your living room or dining room or wherever you have me. Yes, it really is me, and this is Art at Scat. And as you know, Somerville has millions of talented, wonderful artists in all kinds of medium. And the best part of this show is meeting all the different artists. And today's guest is Lauren Kent, who, like Clark Kent, has an alter ego, <laughs> because not only is she this talented painter that you're going to discover and, you know, just love her work, but she also teaches at RAW. And so we know the kids are really lucky to have you. And then we're lucky to have you. Thanks so, for saying say, that. Thank you, you know, for having me. You know, and you brought in this burst of color, especially on a day like today where it's the beginning of fall, but not the pretty fall. And um, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. And um, you are an oil painter. Yes. And uh, you hang out at the airport. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, so we're going to get into those special stories <laughs> that you do. Uh, but tell us something about your style and, and how you evolved as an, a painter. Sure. Um, so kind of growing up, I was really into drawing and painting very realistically and then in college I took a an oil painting class um, and one of our assignments was to do 50 baby paintings I think it was in a week wow and so we had to be really fast really loose and I think that's when I really fell in love with kind of doing this style that is a little bit looser um, and I like working with a lot of oil mixed into the paint um, kind of in a wet on wet so kind of mixing those um, Does that colors really and the, paints while the, it's all Like wet. the drip, the, the transparency through? Yeah, that is more, so I start off with a, an underpainting, which is paint thinner mm -hmm. mixed with the oil paint. Um, and that's where I get all of those drips. And then in the underpainting, I'll kind of sketch out everything. I work off of photos that I take. Um, and then after that, I'll use oil paint mixed with a lot of stand oil mostly to get that kind of honey effect and mm -hmm. I like working as much as I can all at one time so they can kind of blend together before they dry. What is stand? So. Is it stand? It's called stand oil. It's the exact consistency of honey. It's and it's really uh, and you mix it with beautiful. the paint? Yes, and I mix it with the paint. So you don't it looks like you would almost apply it onto the canvas first, but it's mixed into the paint mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. It's beautiful because it gives you. you a lovely transparency and uh, it's, and what is the title of this? Um, this one is called Waiting. Yes, Waiting, it could be anywhere, Logan, any place. Mm -hmm. And they look very calm though. <laughs> they do. Very calm. <laughs> um, and I love the detail with the boots, the feet, the chairs, luggage. And um, you work well with the faces, like you know their faces, but it's, it, it's not so, representational it's a, it has an abstract quality to it yeah I kind of like I, I look at the photo and then kind of turn them into almost more characters I guess as I go do you travel with them. a camera is that it and take pictures um, these are all actually off of my phone camera which at the time that I took these was not even that good um, <laughs> but I try to be as sneaky as I can because I'm taking pictures of people kind of in their element, candid shots, so I don't normally take out a big camera. Okay. Um, so this is kind of like at the hip with my cell phone trying to look like I'm not taking a photo. Which is hard to do, but yes. Yes, right. Yes, and you could just tell Or pretend I'm checking something on my phone, but really. <laughs> but they're wonderful from, from um, that phone. That's a great phone. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, this is which airport did we say, or any airport? Um, I think this is either the airport in Phoenix or Boston Logan. I forget which one. I it was a trip between those two, and I actually forget which one I took the picture. And of. I love the way you did the walkway. Oh, the thank space you. Space between because you did shadow, but it's not your traditional shadow. Mm -hmm. So it, it's and then the foreground. Is this lovely green again? We like the same colors. I love your palette. Thank you so much. And then the um, ceiling, it almost it looks it looks like a you'd want to be in that airport all day long because <laughs> it just looks so cool. And the shadow of people behind. Um, when you all come to the exhibit, which is for the month of November, yes. um, you'll be stunned. You have to come up close to this and then walk away and you'll see like squinting 
how beautiful the colors are. Um, they're delicate and yet very, um, you put on thick too. You put on the, I love the blue. We both love the same Carillion blue. Oh, the Cerulean, the Cerulean blue, yeah. It's beautiful. We were talking about matching the painting. Oh, do that again. <laughs> Notice, people, she came matching, her fingernails match the paint. So, and this takes us to a different place which is... Right, so this was actually um, at Revere Beach during the Sand Sculpture Festival, and it's a snapshot of people walking on the boardwalk. Um, kind of a crowd scene. I really like working with crowds of people and then kind of pulling out different characters from that crowd scene. To write your story or to paint your story. Mm -hmm. And again, the translucent quality of the background. It almost looks like um, a polar scene. Mm -hmm. back with I've ice and I love the kids holding hands <clears throat> some people get caught up with too much detail mm -hmm. and you do just the right amount of suggestion and detail Thank you. it's always a hard I have a hard time figuring out when to stop because I think my mode I want to keep going and yeah I feel I like my paintings a lot better when I stop before I how long have you been that. painting um, so since college, it's been about eight years with oil painting. Were you doing anything before in the arts? Um, before that, mostly drawing and okay. a little bit of acrylic painting, but mm -hmm. that was... No, that's wondering kind of how far and, and how your style has developed over the years. Yeah, with, so my acrylic painting and drawing was very, almost like, tried to be hyper realistic um, and it seemed like this style came about with oil paint as the medium. I just had so much fun with the medium itself um, and it made, yeah, it made my work a lot more And I like that, that when you're talking with your hands about it because people think of paint as just flat. Right. But really you get to mess with it and you get to mold it. Right. I know with myself I'll even put my hand prints on it. Mm -hmm. I like to just get it all over the place. Yeah, I love that with oil paint, that it's so goopy and that it'll drip and you can move the whole canvas and it'll drip in a different direction. And that, yeah, yeah, I do, um, I work in acrylic because okay. I need fast, but this is, it just, it shows you the, the color, the strength of the piece and the, um, just the colors are fabulous. Your use of the oranges and you balance it out so that the eye can follow. And these people, did anyone win a prize in the, over there in Riviera? Oh, for the school, these were all spectators, so oh, okay. <laughs> none of these people won, won prizes. And I actually don't have any of the sculptures in the painting, which is weird, but. Oh, see, I thought you did. <laughs> I was seeing stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. And I love these, I just love them. You do urban people, that's what I like. You do lots mm -hmm. of people. A lot of, yeah, city scenes. Now we're gonna change the scale. Now, if you can see, the scale has changed tremendously um, tell us about this. Um, so those were two gentlemen standing near Central Square and they were completely matching outfits and just the same thing. I, was take, I take a lot of long walks and just kind of snap photos of people I see um, and I just found them really interesting. But instead of doing a whole scene, I kind of just wanted to zero in on those figures. So I'm thinking of doing a few more in that direction. Um, kind of almost like my big paintings, but just focusing on. Just taking one element, one section. Mm -hmm. And the color again, very much the same palette, having mm -hmm. lots of fun. Your, your paintings look like you really enjoy what you're doing. I do, I love it. Yeah, just, I have a lot of fun. It gets frustrating when I'm not happy with it, I think as all artists yeah. get that way. Um, but it's also. Do you ever wonder like where did that image come from or how did you, have you ever gone through a problem of trying to depict something and then it, it happens and then you're like, how did that happen? I don't even, I can't even repeat what I've done. Yeah, well, so a lot of times I'll leave the studio kind of frustrated with myself and then I'll come back the next day like, wait a second, I love that and I don't think I could do that again. Yeah, It's definitely. scary, you don't want to change anything. Right, exactly. And then... Now this is... So that was just to show, this is the underpainting scene at... So when you were talking about an underpainting too, this would be part of that process. Right, so this is what it looks like before it turns oh, okay. into that basically. Um, and I like leaving a little bit of the underpainting so the background is still that thin um, mixed with the paint thinner. 
um, but then going on top of it with a thicker oil. So oil paint. underpainting is a technique that you would do to lay out your painting yes. and also develop shadows and right. just basically so for people who are there watching, they right. can know about under underpainting. Right, and that's the more technical part. I'll look at the photo and try to get it as close as I can and then when I move to um, the oil paints with the oils, that's when I really have fun kind of playing with color and things like Why that. Why do I think your studio must be fabulous? <laughs> I love color. it. It's my happy place. I share it with uh, another artist, Leslie Dubose, and yeah, it's just a really nice sanctuary. And then, am I holding this correctly? Uh, you can hold that however you want. It's the sky, so. Okay, so here we go. Sky this way, <laughs> mm -hmm. kind this of way. Whatever you want to do with that one. <laughs> this way, and this way. Now, this is painted on wood? Yes. Mm -hmm. And do you have to do anything special with the wood when you're doing um, oil? I actually, I bought that with, it's pre-gessoed, so okay. it was all ready to go. But mm -hmm. yeah, you would want to put a gesso layer on there. Can I show them the back just so you sure. can see? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Because I like, we have some aspiring artists there, and I like them to see what is involved in this. Do you ever use a palette knife? I don't. Okay. I would love to try to do that, but I haven't done that yet. So this is thick brushes? Mm-hmm. Brushes are wonderful too. Like you just, yes. uh, they're an art form in themselves. Mm -hmm. I can sit there and like, they're beautiful. They look <laughs> like flowers. And when you pick the perfect one Brush. too. And mm -hmm. when you lose the perfect one, oh, it hurts. Yes. Yeah. And then, let's see, back here. Again, yeah. what is this? So that is, I don't know if you know this, the underpass by Target. Oh, on okay. Somerville Ave. Um, I took a photo of, there's a wall and it has all this kind of dripping paint. It's kind of a gray wall. Um, and there were some really beautiful colors, just kind of that red, orange, um, and some blues and things like that. So I wanted to make kind of more of an abstract, small painting based on that, wow. that photo. We had a, a photographer who used the underside of 93 in that area mm -hmm. and the way he photographed it they almost look like rooms oh, cool. they look like models should be in there and it would be a high fashion shoot because because the angle and it, it really did look clean too because mm -hmm. of the the way the stone and every the cement was set uh -huh. and the light so this is the other mm -hmm. side of that right <laughs> the drippy messy side mm -hmm. well let me ask you how long does it take to do a piece of work? Like, do you come in with an inspiration, a particular idea, or? Yeah, so um, I'm always kind of collecting photos, and then I'll choose one. The underpainting usually takes me maybe like one or two hours. Um, and then from there, I mean, when I was in college, I would always make paintings in one night. I would just stay up. I would, like day through night and I could do Pull one. the all-nighter. Yes, pull the okay. all-nighter, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what that's called. Um, <laughs> but now since I go in in small segments, it'll usually take me like at least a few weeks to finish a painting. Um, but in terms of hours, probably like six hours, five or six okay. hours. And you're going back and you're looking at it and mm -hmm. so. But the whole, that would be pure painting without the setup and the cleaning the brushes. Okay. And, the and cleaning up oil takes a lot of time. Yes, it does. You it have to does. take care of everything. Another reason I like acrylic. It's easy, mm -hmm. soap and water, you're done. It dries oil, quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, especially in the summer, can be really, if you don't have air conditioning, Yeah. that can be really tough. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time to dry. Did you always, which, well, um, um, how can I word this? What scale do you prefer? Do you prefer the small scale or did you start small and work, go to big or? I mostly work large and I really like, I almost am like dancing around with the paintbrush. I really like working large. Um, you have music going? We need to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting into that. I like about the small ones that I can sit down and do it in one sitting and have that wet on wet um, effect. Are you working flat or are you working on an easel? On those ones, I work flat. Okay. And then these ones I'll um, nail onto the wall 
actually pretty high up, and then I'm standing and doing working off of these. So you're they're already stretched, mm -hmm. and then you have them hanging on the wall. Your yeah. studio must be spectacular. I'm telling you, <laughs> you should come visit Open, to, Somerville to, Open Studios, studios. Yeah, Central so Street I'm, Studios. We'll just come by and just visit. <laughs> visit. Because so you 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 attach them to the wall, mm -hmm. and then you just start painting. Yep. Wow. I love that idea because I, yeah. I stay with a canvas, I mean with an easel. And oh, I, do you? Yeah, but then my easel wanders. Are you standing wanders. or are you sitting? Standing. Standing, yeah. But it wanders sometimes because it's not as stable as it yeah. should be. Um, so it gives you that stretch. Uh -huh. But these, <laughs> to think of your process and for six hours, that's quite impressive. That's very impressive. <laughs> And the, the painting that comes from it is just, they're beautiful. Your color, your palette, Thank you. uh, your eye for detail, and for not getting busted with the camera. <laughs> being, that's a big quality. My secrecy. <laughs> I think I'm being secret when I'm drawing on the tea, and they go, oh, is that him? And I'm like, oh. oh. You know, I was going to say, you have a similar process. <laughs> I actually, I don't have it here, but I have um, another... Uh, painting that I really liked making that was people on the subway and it was one of those like snapping photos as secretly as I could. And what's weird, you know what's nice, not everyone here is on their phone. In I that noted, photo they mostly are on the, the one I've on the train. On the train they're yeah. all on the phone mm -hmm. and it's like anything could happen and they wouldn't know unless it was announced on the phone. Right. Or on the rate on the um, on their cell some kind right. of way. Right. I mean it's interesting that painting it's people are yeah they're really in their own zones but I didn't paint the phone so you can't really tell they have that kind of like hunching over like they're looking at their phones but well, I just the saw someone did a there. series of photographs where there is no phone, but mm -hmm. people are posed as though they have phones. Interesting. So it's it's a little scary, but very much you know interesting. Yeah. About that, but people rely on those phones, and you just see phone after phone after phone. Yeah. I like the blue that comes up on their faces, though. It's very scary. <laughs> oh, the glow yeah. of the phone. That that, that would that, be an interesting painting portrait series. That that is the Walking Dead. There. That that is what yeah that's a hard image we won't talk about zombies okay um, so tell us more about your palette because you seem you like your blues mm hmm I definitely I always kind of veer towards turquoise there's usually turquoise somewhere in my painting and blues um, but a lot of times, I mean, if it's a photo where I really like the colors already, like this one here is pretty close to the colors, um, then I'll work off of those. But sometimes I'll just start with a really bright underpainting color and then kind of play off of that. So like this one, for example, the airport didn't really like have that brilliant green color. If it did, color. no people would be there. <laughs> that Not would be really cool. Not even going anywhere. That would be like the <laughs> coolest place in the world to be. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I kind of put that down and then played off of, off of that. And detail again, I'm, I really like the benches. I like <laughs> the, you. I do, I'm a diner person. So that mm -hmm. brings back, that's really, I enjoy that. And I wanted to ask you your background, like where were you self-taught or are you, you were in school? Yeah, um, so I studied uh, in college. I was a painting major as well as a history major. Um, so I learned a lot there. And then since college, I've kind of been working on my own. I actually stopped painting for about one and a half to two years. So what because was that like? Um, it was really hard. I just didn't, so I was going to grad school for art education, and then that was, so much energy and time that I didn't really have any time or energy to um, oh, that must have to hurt. paint. Yeah, it did, especially since my senior year of college, I was doing so much painting. I was really in a rhythm. I felt better than I had about it in a long time. And then I kind of stopped for a while, but also, you know, doing other exciting things. Um, and then my friend and I got the studio space and I got back into it. And your studio so. space is um, on Central Street. Yes. Which is near the Somerville, across the street from the Somerville uh, Museum. So yes. then you get to see two 
different historical sites because I think Central Street Studios is fascinating, and you have a lot of interesting artists in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and I love the building. I love walking. Those are the I only stairs the I really too. like. <laughs> you know, I usually am not a stair person, but yeah. I love the stairs in that building. It was actually really interesting during open studios. We had a lot of people come in and just, yeah, just the architecture of the building, especially since the way our studios are, it's almost like cubicles, but then the ceiling area is really open, so you can see all these cool beams and pipes and things like that. So people were very fascinated by by the space itself. Yeah, they always get uh, fascinated by the space. Mm -hmm. And then they then they like, well, how did you do this here? Mm -hmm. And they would be so fascinated just looking around. They wouldn't even think right. to really do <laughs> anything. The, yeah. Yeah. I love, too, with Open Studios, seeing people's homes and how they make art in their homes is pretty cool, too. Yes. That. But this would be not so healthy for me to make in my home. I actually in college started oil painting in my room, not knowing how bad it would be. And I had someone else do it. You cannot do that. No. You cannot have turpentine under your bed. And especially where you have so many smokers, right. you know, like all over the place. So you just have to be careful. Yeah, pretty flammable. So. And I've heard about, uh, at least for uh, women painters, that when they become moms, they have to give up the oil and right. go to acrylic. But as soon as the kid gets to that age, they're like, back, I'm right back into the oil. And I think they also have, um, they have now, this is weird, but water-based oil paints, where it has kind of a similar effect as of oil paints. And I think you can, I don't exactly know how they work, but... Yeah, if you They're want to try them, water you can, based but, we're saying, but we're saying stick with the, the oil. Yeah, it's, it's stick really, with the good stuff. It's very fulfilling because it, it, it gives you a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so. like molding. It's like you really can mold the color. And you've done something incredible because you're, it looks like water. So you look like you've done watercolor. You've gotten a watercolor texture mm -hmm. with that's the nice. heaviness of the oil. Yeah, that's, that's what I love. I had a friend... Um, Stopped by my studio last week, and I told her that adding oil to the paint was like adding salt to food. It just like makes it nice analogy. Even I know I don't know where that came from. I felt pretty good about <laughs> it too. <laughs> yeah. um, but but it is. It just makes it more vibrant and makes it yeah makes the. Color it's not really just pop putting. Out. It's not like house painting. It's like you really are like giving life to canvas, mm -hmm. and it, it's a wonderful skill to have. Not just skill, but and it's so fun uh, to a do. A calling. It really is a calling. So I think it's uh, since I have so much fun with it too. Teaching, especially um, you my teach sixth it raw. Graders. Well, I teach actually in Revere. I did a program at Raw over the summer, kind of like a summer camp. Um, and then during the school year, I'm a middle school art teacher in Revere Public Schools. So she has all so. those minds, those impressions. <laughs> yeah, which, very creative minds. Which but. brings us to an interesting question. Any words of inspiration that you could give either to your students or to sharing with any of the audience members? Sure. Um, I think one word of inspiration that I give my students often is I think art can be really frustrating at times if it's not, you know, you have something in your head and then you feel that kind of distance between not being able to kind of create that right away. Um, and for that, I always tell them the same thing happens to me all the time. And, you know, you just have to realize sometimes you'll have good days, sometimes you have bad days. You kind of got to put something down and then work with what you have. Um, so that's for my students, and then I would say for um, artists, um, kind of older artists trying to make it or make work while they're also doing other things. Um, I stopped painting for like two years and thought, okay, maybe that was just one stage of my life, and then getting back into it later. I was like, okay, so just because I stopped painting for a while doesn't mean that it's forever. But it does feel that way with the arts. Like if you give up writing or something for a certain period Right. Of you're time, like, oh, I guess I don't do I that anymore. I guess it's not going to happen again. I've lost yeah. it. I've lost my inner muse. And then it exactly. comes back. It's sort exactly. of like needed a vacation from you, I right. guess, if that's, if that's possible. And maybe it'll come back with even more gusto. And so. more passion. Yeah. So just because you're not doing it right now doesn't mean that you won't do it, I guess.
And I should announce that while Lauren is here at SCAT, she'll be here for the month of November. Mm -hmm. She will have a reception. You see how lively she is. <laughs> we have a painting in the background, which you'll be able to see, and she'll be able to discuss it with you later. But we just love the colors, so we had to put it in there. And she wore a matching outfit, so I mean, it just called for that. Um, but it, you know, I people should come down to the reception. And what day did we decide? The we decided the 14th. It's a Saturday. The farmer's market will be happening outside. And so, you know, it'll be wonderful. You'll meet her, all of her positive energy. You're going to come out <laughs> ready to paint and do everything else and see color. And it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be fabulous. Look at Thank that. She's so, much, she's so much energy there. <laughs> so it's going to be. I'm feeling energized. I was not so energized after the school day. And just being here. See, it's great. You have to come on by. And also, it's because of the people who are at SCAT. Because we have Brianna, who's back there, who's, who's giving us the signals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have Adam, who I have an interesting relationship <laughs> with. We've met today, and we've gone from meeting, breaking up, and then back <laughs> together again. And he is, uh, you know, everyone here at SCAT is wonderful. Behind the cameras, they do a lot of work. Um, community Access Television does a lot to help artists get their work out. Um, yeah, you get your work out without working out. I like that. I just thought of that because <laughs> I hate exercise. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's great. And, you know, we thank you so much for making it that much better place for us today and for well, the thank month. Thank you. I feel very honored and to be your artist of the month. <laughs> oh, we are, you know, and we feel honored to have you. Thank so it you. all works out. It's awesome. going to be, people are going to enjoy this, and you've got to rush down here when it comes, when it's set. Uh, we do have an exhibit up now that will be up till the end of, uh, to the end of October. I get all the months confused or whatever. So uh, that's Sally Strand with Abstract. And then you come into this. And for many of us, this is the perfect painting for the season of holidays, because many of us will be in airports. And so I want you to think about how nicely someone's <laughs> taking a picture of you that could be a painting about you in an airport, being very calm. You might be in one of these paintings. So I want to thank everyone for um, your time, for letting us into your home. And as I end every show, assalamu alaikum which means peace be to you. And get out there and create, okay? We gave you a start, so get going. And don't make me find you. <laughs> so take care, and thank you again so thank much, you. Lauren.